In Genesis chapter 12, we have recorded two promises that God made to a man named Abram. God later renamed him Abraham. In verses 1 through 3, we read, Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Now that first promise was kept when God established the nation of Israel. The Israelites left Egypt, they gained their sovereignty, and then they dwelt in the land of Canaan, a land that was promised to them by God. The second promise was what has been referred to as the Messianic promise. For generations the Jews looked for the one through whom all the families of the earth will be blessed. And over 2,000 years ago, a man was born in the city of Bethlehem that many believed to be the one referred to in the promise to Abraham. His name was Jesus. He is famous the world over. Over the past 2,000 years, billions have claimed him as their Messiah. Now the question we want to ask, and hopefully answer today in this video cast, is this Jesus, born in Bethlehem so long ago, the Messiah of the world? Now, he certainly claimed he was. In John chapter 14 and verse 6, we find just one of many versions of this claim. Jesus said to one of his disciples, Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Now, in other video casts, we will talk about what it means to be the Messiah or the Savior of the world. We'll discuss why a Savior is needed and why Jesus is the only one who can claim that status why each of us individually and personally need to submit to him as our own Lord and Savior. But now we ask, should we believe his claim that he is the Messiah, this Jesus of Nazareth? My answer is yes, and I, I want to quickly tell you why. The reason? Jesus Christ, after he died on the cross, was resurrected from the dead. Now, there are other proofs that we could supply, but this is the main one. The Apostle Peter, after telling the Jews at the temple in Acts the second chapter that God had raised Jesus from the dead, he finished his sermon in verse 36 by saying, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, how do we know that this claim that Jesus was resurrected is true? simple. We have eyewitnesses to the fact. As Peter wrote in, in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 16, he said, We did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Now, Peter's reference here was to the resurrected Lord. He saw him, and because he saw him, we can be assured that, yes, Jesus Christ is the one. I know that some of you may doubt that we can trust these eyewitnesses. Well, I contend that we can. We're out of time for today, but I would like you to do something for me. I want you to read about the life of one particular witness. His name, Saul of Tarsus. He is, perhaps, the most important witness of Jesus' resurrection because his testimony is absolutely unimpeachable. And this is something that we're going to be talking about on our next video cast. So, is Jesus the Messiah? Well, the eyewitnesses say, yes, he is. And God himself testified that he is the one that was promised by raising him from the dead. So, praise God, we have a Savior, and his name is Jesus.